I've been shooting 360 videos for quite some time, and not only have the cameras evolved, but also the methods for actually editing the videos, those have evolved as well. So what I'd like to cover here are the three that I've kind of settled into, and to let you know what I felt were the advantages and disadvantages of each. Before I move on, I'd like to offer a couple of words about the GoPro Fusion. Uh, the Fusion is now the camera that I use predominantly for doing 360 photography, and it's worked out pretty well for me. But a big complaint that people have had about it is the fact that there are two separate micro SD cards, one for each of the two cameras. And when you download the, the video file, it has to do the stitching and all of that at the same time, and that can be very, very time-consuming. Now, most of my video clips are 30 to 60 seconds, so it isn't too bad. But if you get into a rather lengthy video clip, it can take hours to do that downloading. Method number one utilizes a free program from Insta360 that allows you to use what they call keyframes to manipulate and freeze, if you will, the perspective that you want the final video to have. Now, one downside of any of this is you still have to go through the time-consuming process of downloading and stitching those files from the Fusion. There's just no way to get around that. Method number two utilizes an app that GoPro has come out with that works on the iPhone or on the iPad. And basically what you do is you download the file from the Fusion onto the device and then once it's on the device, you can do the uh, perspective manipulation by utilizing what GoPro refers to as reframing. Now, the downloading process is pretty fast compared to the usual method of stitching. So I have a feeling that the price that we pay is in clarity because the output looked a little bit softer to me than it did with the other methods. Method number three utilizes a fairly new program from GoPro that works on the Mac, which is the, the platform that I use. And basically, you still have to go through the time-consuming process of downloading and stitching the files off of the Fusion. But once you get that process done, you take it into this new program and it has a reframing capability and then you can create that perspective that, that we're looking for and output the file from there. It was pretty slick and it is now my preferred method for doing this. In conclusion, uh, these are the three methods that I've experimented with over the time. And as I mentioned before, number three is the one that I prefer to use at the present time. Uh, I'm sure that there are ways of taking these files into Premiere Pro and, and some of the other programs that are out there, but everything I've seen on that looks as if it's a much more complex process, or at least it's got more of a learning curve than I prefer to go through, not to mention that those programs tend to be a little bit more expensive as well. So there you have it. Uh, if you look down in the description area, I'll try to put some information there on just a little bit more specific on just uh, what the steps are involved with each of these methods. Uh, it really takes a little bit of experimentation and so on. So if you have any questions, uh, do send me some email or put some comments down below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Uh, other than that, uh, thanks again for listening and watching and all that. Uh, if you feel up to it, subscribe. I'd love to get an extra subscriber or two out of this. But in the meantime, uh, keep having fun with some 360 photography. Thanks again.